1.30. I'm going to call the meeting to order. We've got a quorum. Um, everybody look at the minutes. Motion to approve the minutes from the April 4th, 2024 meeting. Got a motion. Do we have a second? Second. Motion and a second. Cast your votes. Tell us what we've got on continuance request. So for continuance, we have item is requesting till May the 2nd. And item number six, case number 15578 is continued until May 16th. All right. We have a motion to continue those two items. You said it was item number one and number six? Correct. Okay. Motion to uh, continue case number 15490 to the May 2nd meeting and motion to continue case number 15578 to the May 16th meeting. I second. Okay, motion and a second to continue those two items. Cast your votes. All right, those two are continued. Um, are there any requests for a continuance from anybody in the audience? No consent dockets, I assume. Oh, I'm sorry, come on up. Come up here. Yes, sir, give us your name, address, and which right. one you're on. Uh, Johnny Hill, 12428 Southeast 59th Street. And which item are you addressing? Number two. Um, number two? Number Hill. two, yeah. Okay, give us a second. You want to call the case, Cindy? Okay. okay, item number two, case number 15570 is an application, special exception for Johnny R. Hill and Sherry Maskell to allow a mobile home to serve as a temporary second dwelling to relieve medical hardship in the AA Agricultural District located at 12428 Southeast 59th Street. Okay, go ahead and tell us about your application. Uh, the application, it's a medical hardship for my mother. She's 82 years old and she's blind. And we're just, she's got to have somebody to care for. I'll be her primary caregiver to uh, just take care of her, take her to her appointments, to cook meals for her. And uh, doing this the way that we're doing it, it's giving her still just not taking everything from her, giving her what. Uh, just, I, I'm lost my words, but it, uh, but that's, uh, she's got to have someone to care for. The doctors had, had said that she's got to have somebody, her caregiver's got to be within walking distance if th she's not living with them. And we're trying to let her, uh, keep her independence and stuff by not moving her in with us, forcing her to do that. And this is the only other way that we felt that would be, you know, a way that we could give her her, you know, let her keep her independence and, and bring her close to us and to where we can take care of her, make sure she makes all of her doctor's appointments and everything. Okay. Questions, comments mm -hmm. on this application? Nobody signed up to speak on this one. Does anybody want to address the board on this application? Okay, I think we're ready for a motion. Yes, I so move that we accept case number uh, 15570 for a special exception on the grounds that it meets the guidelines for an exception. For how many years? Oh, how many years did you ask for, sir? Three by. years? Three years, for a period of three years. Yes. Yes, sir, for a period of three years. Okay, got a second? I'll second. Okay, we have a motion and a second. Cast your votes. There we go.
you're approved. Item number three, case number 1575 is a request of Tyler Bedner for a variance to standards for accessory buildings in the R1 single family residential district located at 11233 Shady Oak Lane. Hey, Mr. Bedner, come on up. Hi there. Name, address, and tell us about your application. Uh, Tyler Bednar, currently reside at 4319 Granger Avenue, 731C. The application in question is at a location of 11233 Shady Oak Lane in Jones, Oklahoma. So basically, I moved here about a year ago for a new job, been trying to get settled since then. Um, found some acreage that an older couple had split into individual plots. Um, so it's a five acre plot that I bought. Um, it started as raw land. I basically worked to clear it and get it prepped to become a homestead. Um, I'm in the process of wanting to do the garage shop currently, but in my permit, um, they said you couldn't do that without a main dwelling unit yet. Um, but I'm currently in design phase on the house already, which should hopefully be in place within the next year. So it's kind of just an order of operations issue to keep it short and sweet. But I don't know how briefed you are on the application, but open to any questions as far as that's concerned. How long are you thinking it'll be before you can begin construction on the main uh, structure? Say that again, I'm sorry. How long are you thinking it's going to be before you can begin construction on the main structure? On the main house? Yes. I'm currently in design phase, um, so don't quite have a budget agreed to yet, but he told me in February he could probably do it within a year time frame, the builder. So I would say at latest by next April, if that helps. Is that to finish the, the home or to start the home? Uh, to finish, yeah, I hope to be living in it yeah. by now. So within the next six months, you're gonna Correct. have a contract to build yeah. the house. Okay. And basically, this would just provide me security for materials. There's been break-ins. So talking to neighbors out there um, would allow me to move my stuff out of storage, which is a high monthly fee. All that jazz. Any questions or comments from the board? There, there was one written protest. Do you have I did that? see that email. Okay. Something about would hurt the value of her property. <laughs> yeah, I think for, for me, I would like for you to reach out to her just to have a conversation with her. I've met the people that live on the location there. Um, they just, it's like a mobile home with some extra storage buildings, so I can't really understand how I would be hurting the property value, but... Um, do you want me to just try to call her and have a conversation with her? Or? Yeah, that's, that's what I would like. And then I would like to also put into the record that you have to obtain a building permit within the next six months. Okay. Okay. Nobody signed up to speak on this item? Nope. Does anybody want to address the board on this application? Okay, if not, I think we're ready for a motion. Motion to approve case number 15575 for the purposes that it meets the statutory requirements for the requested variance, um, subject to the requirements um, as mentioned by uh, board members. To, okay, to file uh, for a building permit within the six, next six months. Is that correct? All right. You mean a building permit on the house, correct? Okay. The, the current building in question is already in process. Okay. We got a motion and a second. Cast your vote. You're approved. Thank you. Appreciate it. Item number four, case number 15576 is a request. On behalf of Broadway Flex Partners, LLC, for a variance to front yard regulations for through lots in the I-2 Moderate Industrial District, located at 7700 Broadway Extension. Good afternoon, Caitlin Turner, 522 Colcord Drive, here on behalf of the applicant. 
So this property is right in between Broadway Extension, Service Road, and North Santa Fe. The property owner or developer would like an access off of both North Santa Fe and Broadway Extension, which as you can see, all of the development to the south has access on both streets. Um, to do so, we would need a 25-foot setback from Broadway Extension and Santa Fe per the code. So based on the site plan and proposed development, we are seeking a 10-foot variance. Uh, technically, the access along uh, Broadway Extension is going to be the rear of the property, um, but still are required to meet that 12-foot setback requirement. There's a 15-foot utility easement along Broadway Extension that we will be staying away from, so we won't be encroaching in that at all, so maintaining the 15 feet. Um, on the west side. And I'd be happy to answer any questions you all have. Anything from the board? Okay, I don't have anybody signed up to speak on this application. If anybody wants to address the board on this one? Okay. If there's nothing else from the board, I think we're ready for a motion. Motion to approve case number 15576 for the purposes that it meets the statutory requirements for the requested variance. Second. Yep, motion right. and a second. And, yeah, we got a motion and a second. Cast your votes. You're approved. Item number five is case number 15577, a request of Shane LeBeth on behalf of the Rock Assembly of God for incorporated for a variance to the architectural regulations in the O2 office district located at 12440 South Pennsylvania. Hey, good afternoon. Uh, Shane LeBeth with 3241 Southwest 93rd Street. So I'm the architect and I'm here with the, uh, we're representing the, the Rock Assembly of God. I'm here with the lead pastor, uh, Daryl Sanderlin. And we have designed a new building for them. They're going to be moving into a new uh, church facility adjacent to the one that they were in. And so we have designed, we're here for a variance uh, related to uh, being allowed to install some metal wall panels on the exterior. So we've designed the building. You can see it in your packet. A uh, very attractive building, one that... Uh, one that we believe really uh, integrates in nicely with the property and the buildings along Pennsylvania Avenue. Um, one of the things we mentioned in our application was that, you know, we don't believe it's necessary to incorporate EFIS or other, other finishes in that our design incorporates a variety of quality materials and complementary color schemes. And um, we really believe that uh, not allowing metal as a wall finish uh, at this site you know, it's not going to be peculiar because there are a lot of existing buildings and the two buildings that are on the site uh, actually have uh, predominantly exterior metal walls uh, there on those existing buildings. So I can answer any questions that you guys have. Yeah, questions or comments from the board? And again, I don't have anybody signed up to speak on this one. Is there anybody that wants to address the board? Okay, I think we're ready for a uh, motion. Motion to approve case number 15577 for the purposes that it meets the statutory requirements for the requested variance. Second. Okay. Motion and a second. Cast your vote. You're approved. Thank you very much. Item number six was continued till May 16th. Item number seven, case number 15579, is a request of Johnson & Associates on behalf of Bellagio LLC for a variance to height requirements in the C3 Commercial District located at 10224 Southwestern Avenue. Good afternoon, Tim Johnson with Johnson & Associates, 1 East Sheridan, Suite 200, Oklahoma City, Oklahoma. I'm here on behalf of the applicant, um, and, uh, and I'm sure you've seen in your packet, this is uh, on Southwestern 104th Street. 
So this has been developed as, uh, I, th I think I rezoned that over 30 years ago. So, uh, but the C3 just, it's a big piece of C3. It's been developed around by a multifamily on two sides. Uh, and now the uh, owner wants to change things up a little bit and uh, use a, uh, a retail. It's so deep that he, you really can't do anything but a big box on a site that big. So um, we wanted to do some retail with access to the back building. Um, and the normal setback in C3, if we were not adjacent to R4, would be we could go up to six floors, six stories. Uh, but the restriction next to R4 causes us to be at 35 feet and two stories. So what we're asking for is uh, simply uh, to raise that 35 feet to 40 feet. It's a five foot variance. And then it would allow uh, a three story to fit within that height. Um, and you can see by the exhibit uh, that we are significantly away from any of the residential units. Uh, the property would be fenced as required by code, um, and it's uh, not anticipated to be a high traffic area, so we don't see a detriment to the uh, existing uh, R4, which is really facing, this is the back of those units, and most of them are facing the other way, and we're buffered by parking on the north and, a, and an open field on the east. Um, and then, uh, like I mentioned, the... Uh, uh, the requirement of, of 35 feet would go away if we'd, we weren't adjacent to R4, so that makes this unique. Um, the variance is simply asking for a five feet, which is not a drastic change in the code. And then without this variance, we would not be able to do a three-story structure back here, 240 feet, which would allow the use that we're proposing to be the most economic uh, application. So with that, I'd be happy to answer any questions for you. from the board one quick question um, the adjacent uh, apartment building that's next to you is 23 feet and yours is going to be 40 is that correct I'm having a hard time hearing you 23 feet high or 23 yes. feet away there are parks there uh, where am I sorry <laughs> upside down so yeah these uh, those buildings are two-story um, and they are uh, garden style apartments. Um, you know, and the closest distance to one is 105 feet. Uh, I think their height is somewhere around 25 feet. Um, so I'm, I'm pinch hitting today. I didn't write this report. So uh, if we say in the report it's 23 feet, then that's what we've measured. Anything else? Pardon? Nobody signed up to speak. Does anybody wants to address the board on this? Okay, if there's nothing else from the board, I think we're ready for a motion. Motion to approve case number 15579 for the purposes that it meets the statutory requirements for the requested variance. Second. Okay, we have a motion and a second. Thank you. Approved. Item number eight, case number 15580, is a request of Ken Fitzsimmons on behalf of Josh Farmer and Jennifer Aclock for a variance to side yard setback regulations in the R1 single family residential district located at 823 Northwest 31st Street. Hello, Ken Fitzsimmons, architect of Task Design at 1300 Northwest 17th Street. And uh, as you said, I'm here on behalf of uh, Josh and Jennifer, who would like to build their forever home on a property that is kind of unique. They own the house and they own the vacant corner lot. And uh, they both, uh, unfortunately, have rheumatoid arthritis. So uh, it really needs to be a one story and to accommodate all of their uh, the functional needs and a pool that they would use for uh, helping bring relief and therapy. Um, we really need to be able to move the house a little bit closer to the property line than the required 15-foot setback. Um, we don't feel like that this is a detriment to the neighborhood because uh, most of the homes in the neighborhood are built uh, prior to zoning, I think, in 1947, and a good bit of them appear to be at or very close to the property line already. Uh, so we feel like this is something that would be in uh, 
not doing anything that's out of the ordinary for the neighborhood. And uh, I sent some images earlier today and uh, appreciate Cindy accommodating. Uh, you can see uh, the blue dash line, the light blue dash line represents uh, the right of way uh, as best as we can interpolate from the Google satellite. And the white dash line to the right represents the 15 foot setback. And uh, you can see that's just uh, two houses north of them, but a good bit of houses on almost all the streets in this immediate neighborhood uh, appear to encroach quite a bit on that 15 foot setback. And uh, if you have any questions or if you'd like to hear from Josh and Jennifer, I'm sure they'd be happy to talk to you as well. Okay. Questions or comments from the board? I don't have anybody signed up to speak on this one. Does anybody want to address the board to this application? Okay, if nothing else, I think we're ready for a motion. Motion to approve case number 155, 15580 for the purposes that it meets the statutory requirements for the requested variance. Okay, we have a motion and a second. Carrister votes. You're approved. Thank you. Item number nine, case number 15569, is for a special exception of Jeremy Howe on behalf of AMH Homes LLC to allow home sharing in the R2 medium low density residential district located at 2124 North Lottie Avenue. So I'm Jeremy Howell at uh, my office is 36 West Memorial, uh, Oklahoma City. And we're here to get a, a renewal for a home sharing license. Okay, any questions, comments from the board? I don't have anybody signed up to speak on this one. Is there anybody that wants to address the board on this application? Okay, I think we're ready for a motion. Just a couple of things I wanted to clarify. Yes, sir. The quiet hours were opened ended after 10 p.m. I'd like to make it 10 p.m. to 8 a.m. Yes. And it then I'd also nice. like to make a three car maximum and no on street parking. Okay, I think it's on there already. You want to see it? Yeah, I've got it there. I'll keep it there. And then a three year exception. Yes, sir. Do we have a second? Oh, was that a motion? Okay. <laughs> Clarification is what it's called. All right, I will make a motion. Uh, motion to approve case number 15569 for the purpose that it meets the statutory requirements for the requested special exception with our quiet hours being adjusted from 10 p.m. to 8 a.m. and a specific language with, for a maximum number of cars being three. Uh, the application asked for three years. Okay, got a motion. We have got a second. Cast your vote. You're approved. Item number 10, case number 15581, is a renewal application of Amber Gale Gilead to allow home sharing in the R1 and Gatewood Urban Conservation District located at 2035 Northwest 16th Street. Hello, yes, my name is Amber Gulilat and I'm applying for a special exception for home sharing. I own the property at 2035 Northwest 16th Street um, and have been operating it with the home sharing license for the last two years um, with home sharing. We do have off street parking available for up to eight cars um, and we have that in our house rules that uh, all cars need to be parked off the street. Um, we have quiet hours, 10 p.m. to 7 a.m., um, and additional house rules are in there, no parties. Uh, we vet all of our guests to make sure that they're going to be good guests for the neighborhood. Um, I'm happy to answer any other questions you might have. Questions or comments, board? 
And nobody signed up to speak on this one. Is there anybody who wants to address the board on this application? Okay, I guess we're ready for a motion. Uh, I'm assuming you have a pullout sofa or a sleeper sofa. Can you, say that again? you have three bedrooms here, but you have seven guests. So you have a pull-out yes. sofa. Uh, we have an air mattress, and we have two sofas. Yeah. Are they sofa beds or just sofas? Uh, just sofas. Yeah. How many bathrooms do you have? Two bathrooms. Okay. So I can tell that we're. If we're to approve it, I think that you're going to get three years rather than five years. Um, do you have a maximum number of vehicles? Uh, yes, maximum. Um, I think we have it eight uh, because we've got a two car garage and then a long driveway that extends. That garage is like past that property. So, and then there's additional parking. We have a gravel in the lawn behind the house. So, yes. Okay, and you have no on-street parking as one of your restrictions? Correct. Okay. Marcus, you asked about beds. Do you feel comfortable with seven people, or do you? Would I, would, you? I would like to see six if you don't have a sleeper sofa. Um, uh, air mattress, yeah. I'd prefer, if, if you're fine with us doing six, I'd, okay. I'd be on board. Okay. I've got nothing else. You guys have anything else? All right. Um, motion to approve case number 15581 for the purposes that it meets the statutory requirements for the requested special exceptions with the following modifications. This shall be for a term of three years and the maximum number of guests shall be six people. Okay. And a motion and a second, so cast your vote. You're approved. Thank you. Item number 11, case number 15582 is a renewal application of Streamline 12 LLC to allow home sharing located at 1212 Northwest 30th Street. Hello, uh, I'm Burl Folk of 4200 Northwest 144th Terrace and um, the property in question is 1212 Northwest 30th Street. I'm here for a home sharing license renewal. Okay, questions, comments from the board? A couple of questions on the property. Yes. Uh, it's a three bedroom, how many bath? It's actually four bedrooms and um, two and a half baths. With that being such a large home, have you had any complaints over the last uh, year? I'm sorry? Have you had any, any reports to the police about complaints, about noise or anything over the last this year? This home, no. Okay. How many bathrooms are in there? Because you're asking for a maximum number of 12 guests. With uh, I'm sorry, you asked how many bedrooms? No, bathrooms. Bathrooms, there are two and a half baths. So I, I just wanted to bring up, um, the guest count for, because I actually have three um, properties in question today, the guest count I actually haven't changed. It's what I was approved for last year. So you were approved for 12 last year for correct. this piece yes. of property? Mm -hmm. Have you had 12 at once? Have location? I had 12 at once, 12 yes. guests at once? Yes. Yes, um, sometimes not, not necessarily all adults. They're um, usually when it's a higher guest count, for instance, 12, uh, a lot will be children. Okay. Um, but yes, we have had 12 guests, including children, okay. before. I know you made a comment that you were approved for it last year. I feel like as a board, we're learning about home sharing 
as we go. And, and so we are making modifications when new renewals are coming up. And that's part of the reason we're asking a lot more questions now than we were probably even a couple of years ago. Got it, understood. Any other questions or comments from the board? No one signed up to speak for on this one. Does anybody want to address the board on this application? You have questions on what are thoughts on? So you're number? saying that the den is the fourth bath bedroom because it's listed out as three bedrooms with a den. Yes. So the den. So for me, I'm I'd be comfortable. I could I could get to nine guests. Okay. Um, how big is the driveway? I want to know how many cars. Oh, the driveway is pretty large. Um, you can but park we have we the front plus the up front. The side. So um, the front you can fit three, and then there's a really long driveway that goes all the way to the back. But um, I have it set at six. Okay. So I would like to put six cars maximum and no on street parking. Correct. Yes. No on street parking. And you did say you were okay with lowering that number to eight from 12? Nine. Um, nine it was 12 nine. to nine. Nine, okay. You um, are okay with that? Yes. Can we do 10? Nine's fine. Nine, okay, nine. <laughs> okay. Anything else from the board? Anybody want to address this application? Okay, I think we're ready for a motion. Motion to approve case number 15582 for the purposes that it meets the statutory requirements for the requested special exception uh, with the following modifications. Maximum number of six cars, no on-street parking. Uh, maximum number of people shall be nine, down from 12, and for a term of three years. I second. Okay, we've got a motion and a second. Yes, votes. You're approved. Thank you. Item number 12, case, Item number 12, case number 15583 is a renewal application for Streamline 12 LLC to allow home sharing located at 1305 Northwest 16th Street. Hi, uh, Brofolk, 4200 Northwest 144 Terrace. Um, address in question is 1305 Northwest 16th Street. And this is for a home sharing license renewal. Okay. Questions or comments from the board? signed up to speak on this one. Does anybody want to address the board on this? So this one you have listed as a three bedroom? That's correct, correct. yeah, three bedrooms. So again, I'd like to do a maximum of seven guests. Okay, seven guests. Nope. How many cars in the driveway? Um, two in that driveway and then two in the back. So, so maximum mac of four. a maximum of four cars and, and no on street parking. Correct. Quiet hours are listed. Okay. Any other questions or comments from the board? Okay, I think we're ready for a motion on this one. Motion to approve case number 15583 for the purposes that it meets the statutory requirements for the requested special exception with the following with the following modifications. Maximum number of guests shall be seven for a term of three years. Maximum number of cars shall be four and no on-street parking. Motion in a second, so go ahead and cast your votes. And you're approved. Thank you. Item number 13, case number 
5 is a renewal application on behalf of Schumann Hizu to allow home sharing located in, in the R1 single family residential district at 2601 Northwest 112th Street. I Burl Folk, 4200 Northwest 144th Terrace. Uh, address in question is 2601 Northwest 112th Street. This is for a home sharing license renewal. How many bathrooms in this home? I'm sorry, bathrooms? How many bathrooms? There are two baths. from the board there's nobody signed up to speak on this application so anybody wants to address the board okay I think we're ready for a motion I want to ask a quick question before we even vote because um, you're asking for a total maximum number of 10 guests and after I look at how your rooms are broken down for instance, bedroom number one, king bed, foldable cot, sleeps three. Correct, because um, on the on the Airbnb website, a king bed counts for two guests. Okay. It's they usually count um, anything that can be shared as, like, like that. So, so in the cot in the inside of the room is how you're getting to that number three. That's what. Correct. You're, okay, because yes. I don't know how Airbnb are listed. Yeah. Okay. Thanks. So again, because when I look at the total number that you have and the breakdown of those numbers, three plus two is five, plus four is nine, then you have four, and then one. That exceeds that number of 10 guests. Um, they're, they're because of the size of the bed, for instance, one room is a king bed plus a foldable bed, and there's actually um, two bedrooms which has a bunk bed in each, so, um, we can house more guests, but we were limited to 10 last year. So I just kept it at 10. Okay. And, and just like the last uh, application and, and, and for this one, I, I, I think seven maximum guests. Okay. Seven for this one. Would, would fit it. It's three bedrooms and, and then a, the den. Um, this one is four bedrooms. Yeah, it's a four bedroom home. Yeah, as the den is the fourth bedroom. It's, I mean, no. it's, it's listed in the application as three bedrooms with a den. But again, I, I feel comfortable with seven at this location and a oh. maximum of four cars. That's actually my mistake. It was, the fourth room is not a den. It um, has its own closet and everything, but um, yeah, th that's actually my mistake. It's not a den. So in that room number four, it says a full bunk bed. So both the bottom and the top are, are full. Is that correct? Correct. Um, usually for rooms like that, we tell our guests we prefer children just because I don't think a full adult should be sleeping on the top bunk. But um, it, technically, yes, it, it's a two full, two full beds. So don't tell the military that because that's how they sleep. <laughs> that's correct. Okay. <laughs> I, won't, I, I don't recommend it. <laughs> okay. I, I can get behind eight. We've got four, four bedrooms. I can get behind eight. You can, can easily convince me to get to nine if other board members are willing to give nine. So that's kind of where I'm at. Eight or nine? Um, with eight, yeah. With eight? Okay. 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 Anything else from the board? Okay. Nobody signed up to speak on this application. Is there anybody who wants to address the board? 
Okay, I think we're ready for a motion. Motion to approve case number 15585 for the purposes that it meets the statutory requirements for the requested special exception with the following modifications. This shall be for a uh, term of three years, no on-street parking, maximum number of cars shall be four, and maximum number of guests shall be eight. Okay, do we have a motion and a second? Cash for this. You're approved. Okay, thank you very much. Item number 14, case number 15564 is a renewal application for Justin and Ann Franklin to allow home, share, um, home sharing in the R1 single family located at 11508 Fountain Boulevard. Hi, good afternoon, folks. Justin and Ann Franklin here. We are here to renew our special exception license for 11508 Fountain Boulevard. Fountain Boulevard has been our home for the last 14 years where we've raised our children. We've left our home and our beloved neighborhood to protect our child from a toxic situation that has caused mental health issues. We are currently renting in the Edmond Public Schools District and plan to do so until my son graduates in May of 2025. Ultimately, we plan to return to our beautiful home in the fountains when our child graduates. We've had some experience with traditional leases. Um, we rented our home from 2021 to 2022. Those traditional tenants, they were young 20-somethings from California. They made a lot of money. They worked in the medical marijuana industry. They smoked copious amounts of their product under the disguise of medical prescriptions. They frequently entertained their clients, coworkers, friends, and enjoyed the pool and hot tub at late hours. They didn't keep up with the weeds, the lawn, or the landscaping, and negatively affected neighborhood property values. They paid their rent on time, so it was not easy to evict them. They refused to be held accountable or change their ways, and once their initial lease was finished, we did not renew it. Uh, we brainstormed with many friends, colleagues, and professionals in the area on how to avoid this scenario and better serve my neighbors. Ultimately, in 22, we decided a short-term rental model was the best option for our situation. The short-term rental model allows us the ability to be more hands-on with our property, have regular access, and check the property after every use, to immediately address complaints, to properly maintain the property, and ultimately we believe we're better neighbors to ensure we maintain overall property values. We have a thorough vetting process and house rules. Over the last year, we've been through two different professional property management companies in an effort to find one that meets the best needs for our neighborhood. It seemed both companies had issues with balancing their competing interests to book the home and earn money versus ensuring the property was booked with the right type of guest for the neighborhood. We do not have the same internal conflict and would rather not rent out unless the guest is a good fit for the neighborhood. I can assure you we cater to families, sports fans, mature groups of friends, and small businesses rather than the drug-laden party crowd that's being described by those that oppose. I can assure you Matter of fact, many of our current neighbors have actually expressed interest in booking our home. We've actually hosted Fountain Neighbors when one of their family members recently passed away and it was used as a gathering place for out-of-town extended family. Additionally, several of our neighbors have expressed interest in having their aging parents, their grown children, and grandchildren stay at the home during the holidays. There was a request even by one neighbor to host a grandchild's first birthday party Unfortunately, we had to turn down that request due to the sheer volume of guests and cars that were planning to come. We've taken many proactive measures to avoid issues for the neighborhood. We have worked hand in hand with the Fountains Homeowners Association to develop strong house rules. We've implemented 100% of the board's suggestions. We are in full compliance with all HOA covenants and in good standing with the Fountains HOA board. We continue to stay in close touch with several nearby neighbors constantly seeking their feedback. 
We have personally taken on all property management responsibilities. We intentionally forego booking requests that even appear to have the potential to turn into an issue for our neighborhood. We have turned off Instabook feature to ensure in-depth conversations occur with all guests prior to accepting their requests. We have a very thorough vetting process coupled with strict house rules. Our house rules are well documented and agreed to by each guest prior to allowing them to book. Our house rules include an 11 guest limit for overnight stays, no more than two dogs, strictly enforced quiet hours from 10 p.m. to 8 a.m., and that means absolutely no activities, including on the patio, in the pool, in the hot tub, on the basketball court. Note, when we, we receive push notifications to our phones when our home's perimeter security system detects any motion, and we proactively contact guests before our guests contact us. There's absolutely no parties or events to be held, no commercial photography, and no more than five cars allowed on the property. Only two of these cars are allowed in front of the gate and absolutely no parking on the city streets. In addition to the vetting process described, each guest signs a separate short-term lease, initials each of the important house rules prior to gaining access to our home. However, not even the best house rules work when the guest lies, which is exactly what happened on April 29th, 2023. Upon discovering a large party with many cars, we began the eviction process with Airbnb around 4 p.m. The party goers were completely dispersed by 7 p.m. And the last five guests planning to spend the night were fully evicted by 10.30 p.m. If a tenant issue does arise, it will only last hours with a short-term model rather than months with a traditional lease. It is all of the extra documentation that helps us expedite the eviction process and lastly, I'm local and only a phone call away if an issue does pop up. Upon finding about my neighbor's objections in the last meeting, I sent out each neighbor an email in an attempt to address their primary concerns. For example, one of my neighbors on Core Avenue has an issue with a high volume of transient guests, a perceived lack of privacy due to the higher elevation of my backyard, and a floodlight on my basketball court. For her, I have proposed the following solutions. Regarding your privacy, with the HOA board approval, I'd be willing to split the cost of installing an eight-foot fence or taller. If a two-foot extension is not sufficient, perhaps some sort of lattice or vine-type honeysuckle could be erected. Regarding the basketball floodlight, I propose to unplug the basketball court light and switch the circuit breaker to off, making it unusable to future guests. And actually, I've already implemented that change by rolling up the cord, hopping on a ladder, and duct taping that cord to the very top of the basketball pole. I'm 6'7", and, and I can't get anywhere close to reaching that thing. So no guest should be able to use that. Additionally, we've increased our nightly rates by 20%. Raising the nightly price point should successfully reduce the overall bookings and, by default, reduce the transient guests. A different neighbor's concerns on Southwest 16th was excessive noise, music, parties, and parking, specifically loud music being played from a hot tub speaker. For him, I proposed to remove the panels from the hot tub and snip the wires, and I've actually already implemented that, never hearing back from that neighbor. Uh, additionally, I provided all of these neighbors my cell phone number, and we answer that phone whenever it rings. Please note for the record, I have never received a phone call or any communi communication from any of these opposing neighbors regarding my short-term rental. Several of the items listed above were fixed in less than an hour. In the future, I encourage them to reach out to me so that I can address their issues rather than letting these issues fester. My wife, Anne, is now going to quickly read a few important notes from some of my surrounding neighbors as well as the current HOA vice president. As I know that you are going to hear from some of the neighbors here today that oppose, we wanted to uh, read you letters that we received in support of our license. To whom it may concern, I'm writing in response to special exception for home sharing application case 15564 for 11508 Fountain Boulevard. My name is Tony Cox. I have lived in the fountains for almost 25 years. 
I am currently serving as the Vice President of the Fountains Homeowners Association and have been an active member on the board for more than 20 years, serving in several key positions to include President for the last five years until I recently moved to the Vice President position. I fully support Justin Franklin's license renewal as I have worked hand in hand with Justin to formulate a comprehensive and thorough list of house rules that are in the best interest for the neighborhood. Mr. Franklin's property is kept in immaculate condition, which enhances the visual value of properties in our neighborhood. Justin has always been receptive to the board's concerns. He has been easy to work with and has worked hard to find ways to implement the board's suggestions. In the rare occasion that issues have arisen, Justin has hopped right into action and quickly found amicable solutions for those affected. I have personally been involved in ensuring that any complaints that arose from a resident were addressed immediately with Mr. Franklin and the renter evicted if necessary. From my perspective as a Fountains Homeowners Board member, Justin and Anne Franklin are good neighbors who are in good standing with the HOA Board. The Board has previously addressed short-term rentals through ensuring short-term rentals enforce the rules they have submitted to the Board for approval in preserving the peaceful environment of our neighborhood. Over the last few years, we have had more conflicts with permanent residents being a nuisance to their neighbors through harassment, etc. We have never experienced such complaints with any of the short-term rentals in our neighborhood. Actually, the long-term rentals have created some of our greatest concerns with our covenants due to non-compliance with roofing, color specifications, yard upkeep requirements, and cannabis smoke complaints. Please let me know if you have any additional questions regarding this matter. Respectfully, Tony Cox. To whom it may concern, I am the owner of the home directly next door to 11508 Fountain Boulevard. I own and reside at 11512 Fountain Boulevard. I have not encountered any issues or problems with the house at 11508 Fountain Boulevard being a short-term rental property. The guests are all well vetted and the host clearly states the rules for renting the property and creates a family environment. I believe there is a strict 10 p.m. curfew and I have not had any disturbances. I myself have had interest in having my visiting family be able to use this well-maintained property. There should be no issue in allowing the owner of 11508 the license to operate that property as a short-term rental. Thank you, Praven Patel. We live in the cul-de-sac at 11509 Fountain Boulevard, two houses down from Justin and Ann Franklin. For the past couple of years, I think, they have been leasing out their home as a VRBO. They did discuss this with us beforehand and assured us that they were taking numerous precautions to ensure that any parties would be respectful of the property and neighbors. Some of these included a relatively high price point, number of tenants, noise restrictions, stated quiet times, for example, after 10 p.m., and parking rules. They've also indicated to us that they do a pretty thorough screening of tenants, not only for the neighborhood's benefit, but also to protect their property. Living this close, we've typically been aware when guests are staying there because of unknown cars in their driveway. We have never thought any of their guests have been unruly, excessively noisy, or disruptive in any way. There has only been one instance where the guests were here to attend a wedding, which may have been noisier than usual. We talked with some of the guests because we noticed there were, a few, there were quite a few cars at the home. They told us they were having a get-together at Justin's house before the wedding in the afternoon, and the wedding was in the evening at a different location. We offered our driveway for their guests to use so that they didn't need to park in the street. They were very polite and appreciative of our offer. We did notice the party noise during their afternoon get-together, but it all seemed very fun and cheerful, and we didn't think it was any worse than other residents' occasional get-togethers. As their guests promised, we saw them all dressed in wedding attire and leaving the residence in the late afternoon, early evening, probably before 6 p.m., but we weren't really watching the time. After that, we didn't notice them at all the rest of the evening. Their home and lawn are always well maintained and we haven't had any problems with any of the guests staying at their home. Respectfully, Mark and Debbie Chilcote. My name is Jonathan Melkor. I live at 11504 Fountain Boulevard. I have been a neighbor of Justin and Ann Franklin for 15 plus years. When Justin and Ann first choice, chose to make their property available on Airbnb, they let my wife and I know about their decision and consulted us about any of our concerns. They let us know what rules they planned on having. They planned on vetting all guests before accepting reservations. The property would have a strict 10 p.m. curfew. They weren't going to allow more than two cars in the driveway in front of their gate and none in the street. They were aiming for a higher echelon of clientele, preferably family friendly, to minimize issues on the property. When the property was in use by guests, we did not have any real problems with guests minus one case on April 29th, 2023, which I will get to in a minute. Occasionally, a few guests would play music outdoors 
especially during the summertime, but it wasn't louder than any of my other neighbors who have backyard events. One guest accidentally drove into the grass area between our properties on a wet day and left a rut. Justin was quick to rectify the problem with adding new dirt. Even though our vehicles are often parked outside in our driveway, we've never had a problem with anyone disturbing our vehicles. Most of the clientele that Justin and Ann allowed as guests were family friendly or an occasional work team that was doing a remote job nearby. The only exception to all this were the guests on April 29th, 2023. They had numerous cars parked out in the street and blocking driveways of other homes within our cul-de-sac. They were playing music outside well above neighborly levels. Just as we were about to let Justin and Ann know about the situation, they contacted us, saying that they were in the process of giving the guests warnings to immediately rectify the situation or they would be evicted. When the guests ignored the warnings, they were evicted within the hour. We have had minimal issues with guests renting the 11508 Fountain Boulevard property. When issues did arise, Justin and Ann were very attentive to any of our concerns and quickly made the effort to correct the problem. They have been fantastic neighbors. Regards, Jonathan Melkor. So unfortunately, I don't have the financial luxury of letting this property sit vacant until we move back home. But I am trying very hard to mitigate my neighbor's concerns. The bottom line is I want to be good neighbors. I want to do things the right way. I continually and proactively update our house rules as I've learned new lessons. We want to be in compliance with the city, and we hope that you'll approve our application for special exception. I can't guarantee that there will be zero issues. However, I can guarantee I will take swift action and my neighbor's concerns, my concerns. I care deeply about my neighbors and the neighborhood, and I will ensure to protect its peace, and we hope to someday be able to return to our home. Thank you. Any questions? Okay. Thank you. I've got a couple of folks signed up to speak, so let me hear from the protesters. I've got Greg and Lisa Scott. So, Get, first, give us your name and your okay, address. Okay, Greg and Lisa Scott. We're at 2409 Southwest 116th. We have the property just adjacent on the south side of their entire backyard. Uh, we're friends, we're cordial, we know one another, we, we've texted, we've communicated through the years. We've roughly been there about 20 years. Um, however, we weren't able to attend last time. We were asked by the Franklins to submit an approval letter. Uh, we've tolerated a lot of nuisance, a lot of noise, a lot of things that we feel like we shouldn't have to, uh, considering it's our primary home. And we've been there, we've spent the money, we've updated it, we're there for good. Uh, so that being said, we submitted a letter to Cindy uh, and also the Franklins on how we felt, our concerns, and I would assume that you guys have a copy of that in front of you. So we personally want to come and just show our faces with the letter. Uh, when we did not attend the first one, we were able to uh, watch the minutes on the YouTube video guy, uh, that you guys do. Uh, and we thought, well, maybe it's time we quit tolerating and listening to come in and speak what we really see in here. Because my backyard, my pool, which we raised our kids there, we've had plenty of parties or gatherings or celebrations, however you want to word it. Um, with Little League teams, baseball, football, you name it. I mean, we've been there a long time. Uh, so that being said, we know what usually happens at get-togethers and things like that, and we've tolerated a lot. We have never called these guys uh, regarding the Airbnb. At times, we've watched each other's dogs, or if our dog's bark and we're out of town, blah, blah, you know, whatever. Just neighborly stuff. However, they've been gone a few years. Uh, we've like I said, everybody keeps referring to this party on the 29th. Um, I was out of town that day. My wife was home. Um, it did get out of hand. I mean, we actually knew the people that were there too because we're pretty big advocates in the Westmore area. Booster clubs, all that good stuff, sports, anyway. That being said, uh, there's been several other occurrences uh, that's never been mentioned. Uh, basically, the, the pot smoking, dope smoking, well, whatever you call it now. Uh, we're not prudes, we're not that neighbor, we're not going to complain about everything, and that's why we haven't called. But there's been several times it happens. I mean, we have curfews, we have rules, we have regulations, but we all know when they enter that house or walk out in the backyard, which is the main 
probably the main issue is the swimming pool, the backyard, the, the, the get-togethers, the gatherings, social events, however you want to word it. Um, once they get out there, if there is drinking, if there, I mean, it, it just, it, it escalates. It gets louder and louder. Uh, we're old enough now. We don't have the kids there. We go inside. We go out front. We do other things. We've learned to tolerate, but we just wanted to show up and give our reasoning, what we've seen, what we hear. I mean, we've had a very sick dog for the last year and a half. So every time the dog had to go out in the evenings, my wife or I would go out with her one, two, three o'clock in the morning. Curfews are curfews. The news doesn't even come on to 10 o'clock. I mean, I can understand people sitting on the back patio talking at 10, 11, 12, 1, 2. We've done it. So it, it, I guess my, my point there is curfews are written and signed and leases are done, but who really abides by them, you know, is what I'm trying to, to, to say. I mean, they're just... You don't have the control unless you're there with them on everything that goes on in that house and in that backyard. Basically, that's, that's what I had to say. So the noise, the nuisance, me deciding what I'm doing that day versus that day. Am I going to have friends over, family over, grandparents over? Am I going to have to listen to vulgar music? Am I, I mean, it's just, it's turned into like the funny thing is now is I wonder what this spring and summer is going to be like. You know, I swim in that pool every single evening. These guys can attest to it. That's my exercise. I'm out there every day, every night. My, I, just, I just enjoy the outside. And what we've had to occur the last couple of years, it's not every time, it's not every rental, it's not 50% of the rentals. It just takes one or two, man. And once you get that in the back of your head, you got to doubt what's going to happen. So that's where we stand. That's our opinion. And we just wanted to share that. And, and we shared it with these guys, so they understand like I said, this ain't personal. They're running a business. We live there. It's our, it's our primary home. And I think we are the closest. Our pools are probably 40 foot apart if, if you took a fence down, you know. Um, so. And bottom line, it's just the fact of when they live there, they're our neighbors. And you respect each other as neighbors. Well, you call one When it's strangers every week, every weekend, our best interest is not the first at hand that they're thinking of, these strangers. So therefore, in plain sight, we can see them, they can see us. Because of a failing fence that has gaps in it, whatever, it's part of it, but every single time we can see what's going on, they can see us, which that's fine, we get that. But when you don't know what to expect week to week, that's one of the reasons we disapprove. It's just the unknown. We live there, we're permanent. We would like to be able to call in and Justin say, hey, what's going on? Or, hey, we're having this. Everybody usually sends out letters. Hey, we're having a graduation party. Get ready right. for the cars. Hey, we're having this. We're having that. I mean, we've been there. It is a very quiet neighborhood, very nice neighborhood. And we don't intend to leave. Uh, but things change. And it's not, I feel like it's not our job to have to inform them every single time. That's, we have a life too. So having to pick up the phone and call somebody, text them, this is going on, that is going on. That's not what we're living there for in our home, in our permanent dwelling. So, um, you know, it's just something that you don't look forward to every single week. Do we have renters shut the blinds because they can see right in? Um, let's change our family gathering this weekend to another weekend because, you know, so, or to another location. Sure. So, thank you. Appreciate your time. Thank you. Okay. Thanks, guys. Questions, comments from the board for these folks? Then I've also got Ray and Deborah Villanueva. Did I say that right? Okay. <laughs> Should be. Okay. I'm Ray Villanueva. This is my wife, Deborah. We live at 11509 Core Avenue, which is directly east from where their home is located. Our backyards butt up to each other. Um, ever since they've moved out and they've had the rental or the people he was talking about from California. We never had issues with them. Uh, the copious amounts of marijuana they smoked, never smelt it. I'm a police officer. We all know what marijuana smells like. I've been around there for 22 plus years. Um, and that was never an issue. We never complained to other neighbors about it. And it wasn't until they turned into a short-term rental that we started seeing these issues. 
um, parties uh, blocking the street, the neighbors that live in that cul-de-sac that wrote these letters, with the exception of the vice president of the HOA, um, I don't see how they didn't complain or don't complain. Because as you can see, there's no room for any parking in that cul-de-sac when you're having a gathering. So they start blocking off the cul-de-sac, they'll block off 114th Street, um, and sometimes even loop around to our street. Uh, so we have an issue with that because sometimes I do work at night, come home at three in the morning, and the music is going, I mean, constantly. I try to sleep, the morning comes around, they're back at it again if it's on a Friday into Saturday morning, um, and then they're checking out on Sunday for the most part. So this home is more than likely always used for a gathering to hold parties, I mean, bottom line. Yeah, I just feel like he mentioned at the last meeting. Could you move the microphone. Yeah, there we go. We're, he mentioned you. at the last meeting that they it's rented out 52 times. Those people aren't there to have um, an indoor, you know, quiet weekend indoors. They're there to take advantage of these amenities, rightfully so. We got a pool, <clears throat> basketball court, which you can see is right there, practically in our backyard which is right there by our living room, by our master bedroom. So at two o'clock in the morning, which has happened in the past, we hear a bouncing basketball. It wakes us up. Now, did we call the cops? I live with one. Do you really think one is gonna show up because we hear a bouncing basketball? No, they have more important things to do. So what I'm saying is this home is being used as an event center my backyard is not an event center. And I feel like with these 52 times that they were rented, that's what they're used for, to have their gatherings, their parties. While they're home sleeping at night, I'm at home listening to these parties, opening up my living room you know, door to smell weed at times. I can't be sitting outside of my patio enjoying my patio because there's people blaring their music. Now, yes, you can have these rules and put motion detector lights and get notifications on your phone, but can you really keep them from going outside? No, you can't. They're grown people. And as you can see, like my husband said, there's not parking there. Now, you can tell them to park behind the gate, but no. Our neighborhood was not built for a home share. It wasn't. This is our home. It's not just our property, it's our home. This is where we live. I've, we've lived there for 20 years. This is where we've raised our children. They don't live there, we do. And this is where we intend on staying. We don't plan on, we don't plan on selling, but I will tell you that if I decided, we decided to put our home on the market today and a prospective buyer found out that it's a high rental behind us, do you honestly think that they would want to purchase a home, knowing that there is a high rental right behind them that's gonna have constant parties all the time? Probably not. I'm a realtor, I know that. So yes, it does affect the, <clears throat> the value. Having an occasional yard that's a little overgrown, no. Having a high rental property behind you, yes, that will affect the value. So I'm just asking, this has to stop. It has to stop. Enough is enough. We've been dealing with this for, for a while now. We just want the tranquility of our neighborhood that we used to have. That's it. Anything from the board? Okay. Thank you. Thank you. These are the only folks that signed up to speak. Is there anybody that wants to address the board on this application? I guess my question would be is at the Franklins, you guys have mentioned that um, you reached out to them and proposed some solutions. What kind of feedback have you gotten on those proposed solutions? So out of the four emails that I sent, and that was the original opposition on the fourth, um, only one has responded, and that was Deborah and Ray. Um, I think we're still kind of maybe working through some of the proposed solutions. I've already implemented the light on the basketball court. Um, I was standing in my backyard the other day trying to see if two feet of, 
uh, fence line extension would really kind of solve their their privacy issue, and I don't I don't necessarily know that it would, um, and so finding some sort of amicable, maybe it's trees, maybe it's something taller, maybe it's lattice that can be erected several feet, or maybe we just build like a custom fence that is you know much higher on, on their section. Again, it's going to require the HOA board approval. I think that we can, you know, with both of us desiring that if, if they can agree and I can agree to finding something, a solution, uh, I'm open to it. So that's, that's where we've been. I didn't hear back from any of the others. And then Greg and Lisa just had submitted their opposition letter, but we've previously been also talking. Um, so we'll continue to, to work with all of them. Um, I think the new item that we implemented just since hearing from Greg and Lisa, which um, as, as Greg mentioned, I mean, we've been in contact with them from the beginning and up until this week, this was the first I had heard that they have had problems. Um, I take it very seriously that they wish that there weren't so many guests. It is true that last summer we were booked almost every day. So the new implementation that we did this week was to raise the fees we're fine with having less or fewer guests in order to um, answer their concerns while still being able to cover our costs. And so um, hoping that this summer we won't have back to back to back guests in the hope to make our neighbors happier. I, I take these concerns very seriously. It breaks my heart to know that we've upset people we call friends, and this was the first I had ever heard of that, even though we had asked them to contact us to let us know they were having problems, and they never have. So my, my uh, comment is, I heard you say that you've raised or increased the uh, cost to stay there, correct? What about the number of guests? Have you done anything to reduce that number? And also, um, the concern seems as though, because you rented out so frequently, that that's a huge problem? Have you considered not renting it out every week after week? We could certainly mitigate as our calendar books for a certain amount that particular month. We could shut it down for the remainder as long as we know that we're meeting our costs. I think that you asked the Scots if, if they have events coming up in the future and you'd oh, like us true. to block those dates off. We've done that, so I think, was it Father's Day? That's true, yes. She had one particular day that apparently was a problem for them last year on Father's Day, so I have closed off Father's Day, and I offered to her if she has other dates that she wants to have people over and doesn't want people at her house, I'm happy to shut down the calendar on that day. If I may, if I can get the Scots and Villa and Nuevos to let me know as to the proposed fence solution, is that something that's one of the issues that I think I've heard from both of you guys saying that the line of sight from their elevated backyard into your backyards is an issue. So I think that that's a possible solution. I'm not sure as to the pot smell. Um, obviously, uh, that's going to be a hit and miss even with long-term rentals, right? So I, I do recognize that. Um, with but as to the fence, I'd like to get some feedback as to if you guys believe that is a possible solution going forward. So, as far as the fence concerns, they built a pool, I believe. They took that dirt to dig the hole, moved it to where they added concrete, which raised their yard substantially, uh, which has created a different problem itself that he was not willing to fix at the time. But that's a different topic. Um, so, I don't believe he's going to be willing to do this, just from my past experiences with him. Um, and I don't see why I should have to pay for half of the fence because I replaced it once by myself when he did not help at all. I'll just, he had comments as to what he should have done different if he would have been doing the job. So we have had our differences in the past and as of today, I don't, I don't believe that'll happen. I don't and think we should bear the, the cost of, of <clears throat> paying for a fence when we didn't, we didn't ask to have the Airbnb. We didn't ask to have the, the home share in our backyard. We didn't ask for our, you know, our evenings or our nights to be, you know, disturbed. 
So and why should we have to pay for fence? Uh, you know, I sell new construction fence right now. That fence alone right there would cost at least six thousand dollars just for fence alone. Do I want to pay three thousand dollars for something I didn't ask for? I can assure you, no, <clears throat> I'm not. If it was raised, though, regardless of cost, if it was raised and you had the privacy back, would that be a possible solution going forward? That would fix the, the fence problem. But the, that's not going to fix the issue, Roberto. It's not going to fix the entire issue. That's just, gonna, that's just the surface right there. We're, we still got the issue of the noise. Mm -hmm. We still have the, the issue parking. of the, the parking. We still have the issue of disturbing. So, so let me, get, let me interject a little bit here. What we can do is we can, we can solve some of that, those issues for you. We can dictate how many cars can be put no, in the parking I mean, I lot that and part. no on-street yeah. parking. We can I lower the number of, of guests. What we can't do is make them pick days. We can't, they have a right by ordinance to have this Airbnb. <clears throat> and so what we can do is mitigate it, but we can't stop it altogether unless they have some and when we have neighbors that are coming protesting, that helps us as a board figure out what restrictions we can possibly look for to balance both sides, right? And so that's what I'm looking for right now, because I'll be honest, the fence situation, my proposed solution is that you take some of that income. And I realize you've got your mortgage, but I think that should be bored by yourself, by you guys, not the, your neighbors, if this is going to be a possible solution. So that's why I'm asking. If we can get raised the height, is that going to solve that part of it? Not talking about also the basketball bouncing at 2 o'clock in the morning, which I agree could be someone with a short-term rental. It could be long-term rentals. It could be it But those, could be are, those are all enforceable by code enforcement, right? And, and you don't want to call in. But if you don't call in, we don't know. And the reason why I don't like to call in on our neighbors is because I know our response time. I know that every call that we get is a priority and a disturbance. It, and, and they might not, but so just city code enforcement, they'll take it down and then we get the record mm -hmm. and then we know it's at least a violation. Even if they didn't get ticketed, they so know it'll be called. So going on the website and doing an action gram every yeah, time something happens? Three five okay, three five. I can do that. Right. And, and you know, then you'll know. Scott. Yes. Yeah, step up. To so we do have an eight foot fence. We installed it prior to them even moving into that home. Um, it will help on physically seeing in and out, but it, like she said, it doesn't doesn't do anything with the noise or what's going on behind that fence, which you guys understand. Uh, and I think that's why your HOA and all your numbers, neighbors in front don't have the complaints because all the noise is in the back. It's kind of like an amphitheater. It all shoots back towards us. Right. Uh, single you know family saying? home, swimming pool. There's going to be noise. I, I've done it too. I get it. No, so, I get it. But that, we've that's been the process. through the fence. That, that's why we want to put quiet hours on there so that there's a time. And if they don't abide, you can call and then we'll know. But, you know, it's, it, there's a process to be taken. And I, I just feel like what we can do is lower the number of guests, lower the number of cars that are going to be there, no on-street parking, and also lower the term the length of the exception. And I just want to say this to the neighbors because I did hear her say that um, she has received calls before about requesting certain days not to be booked. So please, if you think that's going to be a problem, make sure you contact them because apparently you do have their contact information. You know, if you know for a fact that you're going to be hosting something at your house where you may have a large number of people in the area as well, just get with them and say, hey, look, we need to work this out. That makes plenty of sense. I appreciate that. But I, I really don't need to be doing that. It's my own home. And, and I shouldn't ask permission if and, I could have no, my No, no, no. It's not asking permission if you can do something. It's asking them not to do something, not you. It's asking <laughs> them you. not to. Yeah. Right, right. Because they seem like they're willing to work if they know in advance. So there are certain property managers that are using um, devices within the home that automatically alerts them once a certain decibel has been reached. Have you guys incorporated any of that into your home? We have motion. We don't have sound detection. 
And in the event of um, the motion detectors telling us after 10 p.m. that people have, are still outside, we have contacted guests and asked them to come in. Um, I, of course, am I certain that that has always been effective? No, but we take it very seriously if we can tell that people are on the patio after 10 p.m. and we contact them and ask them to come inside until, until the motion has stopped. Um, and with respect to the reports of the parking that's all the way around the block, every guest that checks in, we check the camera to see how many cars are parked there. We have not seen, other than that instance that we took action to evict guests when we saw many, many cars. Other than that, we're not seeing what she has, what Deborah has reported. And I would just like to uh, touch, touch in on something that's been stated as far as the action center. That's not a small thing. Uh, I don't want you guys to leave here thinking that it's a foregone conclusion that we just approve all short-term rentals. Uh, I know myself personally, I've, I've made the statement several times that I'm really big on the management of the, the Airbnb. Uh, what, what Don stated is true. They've got a right by ordinance. City Council sets that. So some of these things are already in place, but, but we are here for a reason. If you guys show up and you present uh, documentation, photos, call logs from Action Center requests, that is something that weighs a lot. And we've had it happen in the past. We've denied applications before. So I don't want you to leave here thinking there's absolutely uh, no way that we can deny an application. But you guys, would, as much as I agree with you that it's unfair, the onus should not be on you to reach out to the to the, uh, the operator and say, hey, I've got a problem, but I just want to be clear that it goes a long way. We, we absolutely consider that, and if it's egregious enough, we will absolutely, I'll, I'll vote against it. So I, I want to be clear about that, just moving forward, that you guys do have some, some options there. What's the term that they're asking for, for the renewal? They're, they're asking for two years. Well. May I correct that? When I first submitted the application, I believe it was February 1st. And so I thought I just asked for a year and a half at that time. It is 1.5. Okay, much time has passed since then. Honestly, we only need 13 months. So we do one year because it's only 12 months in a year. Okay. I'm not sure if we can do months. I think that's part of it. I think we have to go by a whole year. I think that's why we, I was why pushing I for the, the two year. I mean, as as y'all's neighbor, um, I, I don't know if I should vote or not, or sure if I should abstain, but I'm trying to find an applicable solution for everybody involved. I do think that if we can get a higher fence, but I also don't think that they should be made pay, should be made to pay for it. Mm -hmm. I would definitely look into the the sound um, notifications because I'll be honest with you, I've got a pool in my backyard. There was times, well, when my kids were younger, that they would make a lot of noise even after 10 p.m., right? So I don't necessarily think that forcing people who are staying at your home to come inside after 10 is, a, is required if they're just going to be sitting outside talking at a very low, low level. And I know that my family has done that many times. So I, I understand, um, you know, I don't, I don't want to say, I don't want you guys to have to like, basically um, bird dog your, your tenants um, for that purpose, to be inside after 10. Um, but I, I do think that if you were automatically notified as to, oh, the level, the noise level is getting pretty high, such that it's going to interfere with their, their um, living, then I think that, that you need to figure out what that decibel point is. But I also think that, you know, if the Scots want to be able to swim and not have to worry about people looking down in their regard, I think they should be allowed that. But I also realize, to their, to their point, is that they, cho they didn't choose to have their neighbor become a business owner for the, for the temporary time, right? And so I'm very mindful of that, but I'm also mindful that you probably have a mortgage that you have to pay. So um, I don't know what the solution, my solution would be, as Don has kind of mentioned, is you know, a one, knowing that you guys are gonna have to, potentially have to, Incur, endure it for another year, right? Um, definitely the limit of uh, vehicles, um, no on-street parking, maybe lowering the number of guests. You guys have a beautiful home, right? We live in a very, we're fortunate to live in a great neighborhood. Um, 
and people are going to see that and they're going to want to party, especially if, if it's someone new, they don't have a, a pool in their backyard. My kids, are, I mean, my kids swam in my pool one time last year, right? I, I don't know how many hours I wasted trying to keep that thing up. Um, but for people who are renting it, that may be their one time during the year, right? So I can understand that your neighbors have to endure that, whereas my neighbors don't. Um, so I think those are some solutions. Um, again, for you guys, you guys are gonna be the ones that are most affected because it is the backyard and that noise is not gonna carry over to the front side. I would welcome any other ideas or input that you guys may have. I mean, I don't know any other way to address the noise. I mean, because we do, every single one of the letters that they received are from neighbors in the front. One's from three blocks north yeah. and to mm -hmm. the east, um, where the vice president lives. And they're friends of theirs. Um, and so, one comment that he made to the developer when the developer called them was, get with the program, Harlan. It's 2023. Yeah, and the call. So, the, and he's one of the letters that they yeah. brought. So. And that party was not dis the party was not dispersed at 7 p.m. or 8 p.m. I actually looked at the call. The 911 call came in at 23:01, 11:01 in the evening. It wasn't four or five o'clock. Yeah, it was we after came, midnight. We came home from dinner. It was after 10:30, I believe, and the roads were the streets were blocked. So, so the party did not disperse, starting at four or five o'clock, like he said. It was still going on. It, everybody didn't leave till after midnight. And I was witness to that because it's in my backyard. So we saw all of that. And I'm gonna have to reinforce what one of my colleagues down here said. You're, you're gonna have to call, make those calls. And, and we are. Yeah, I mean, you, if you I have, have to, to do that now, before I was just, I was tolerating it. I was tolerating it, but it's gotten to the point where it's just enough is enough. It's enough. Yes. And, you know, and, and I don't wanna be that neighbor. I don't, I really don't. We're busy. I'm sure they're busy. This is their business. That's their business. That's their. Income. But it's your home, so it you need home. to exactly. make those calls and so if that's have what it I documented. Have to do now, and I have to document every Better single speak. time. Then that's what I have to do. Yes. Unfortunately, and I, I get it. I understand, but you know, if that's what I have to do, that's what I have to do. Anything else for these folks? Yes, Scott. My only opinion. Oh, yes. Step up just, to the. Step up. So. We get it on the record, please. I just, I'd like to, to do the fence. We tried it a few years ago. Recall that on the privacy fence? So we have, a, we have an eight foot privacy fence between right, us. Right, and we patched it yep. three or four years ago. Uh -huh. And I think it's time to replace it and make it a true privacy fence. So it's just the forward. height that's a problem. There are some repairs that are needed. So basically when a fence settles and it gets aged, you get gaps. So now there's spacing between. I mean, I can sit on my back patio and see their entire pool. So we had discussed this a few years ago with the Franklins. Uh, actually, Ann asked my wife if we'd like to put up a new fence, and we would. And Mr. Franklin came over and seemed to tell me that it was my fence, not his. So you might keep that in in mind with all of our uh, suggestions and options that we have as a neighbor, not a business owner at the time. I patched it myself. I bought the material myself. I accessed his property and fixed the back of it. Okay. That was probably four to five years ago, before all this started. So, Mr. so that just gives you some history on the working together and all this. Well, Mr. Franklin, I'm gonna have to be very blunt and honest. Um, as a good neighbor and as a businessman, and you listening to the concerns that they have regarding the fence, one of the problems is the cost of the fence, which um, he's stating that he should not be responsible for paying that. Can you work that out where you can let him know that that's not his responsibility? I can. I don't know that there's any issue with that fence line. It hasn't caught my eye. Um, we've, we've made repairs to that fence. It's, so I absolutely can, I, that was, not, I cannot see into his backyard. It, the fence is doing its job, but. Yes, we can do that. Thank you, ma'am, I appreciate that. You pay attention to her, she got you out of that that quickly. Thank Thanks, you, guys. because that was my hold up, so thank you. 
Sure. Thank you, ma'am. Okay. I think we've covered the issues more than once. Yeah, so, so what I'd like to do is just negotiate the number of guests and what you feel like. And I think, and I know it's a big house and probably five bedrooms, but I'm, I'd like to see a maximum of eight. Okay, and I will say. And four cars. We have had the limit at 11 for nighttime guests, but when people have said, well, we're visiting town, our, our family lives in town, can they come over in the day? At this point, when we've had these conversations about family-oriented gatherings, we've said, oh, okay, you can have up to 15 during the day, but they can't stay over, and they, you must abide by the curfew. So well, we just won't so do that is, anymore. This is what I tell you. Yeah, it's, we just won't do that for anymore. For me, I need a maximum number of eight guests. For you as the operator, you put as many people in you want. If they call on you, code enforcement. So you started the conversation with a negotiation down? Yep. Eight. You're at eight, can so it's we've got it at eleven, which is already far lower than what that house can accommodate with if it's equipped differently. Um, I'm just curious, can we raise it to ten? So let me ask you a quick question because to me, um, the number of guests is not a big issue because your cost is still going to be the same. They still have to pay the same amount of money to rent that place. So. Even if it goes down to eight, that shouldn't be an issue. You're still going to charge them whatever the amount you're charging, right? That's accurate. And we'll okay, just so I don't curtail them having daytime guests from now on. Well, the reason I'm bringing up what I just stated is because I'm going to almost have to support him. Because, again, we're hearing uh, concerns about the number of guests that you're entertaining in that place. But regardless of if it's six people or 12 people, you're still going to charge that same rate. So that shouldn't be a, a problem stopping you by saying, yes, we can reduce that number. Okay. I think that was advocate against the board. I think that the issue, and, and I'm guilty about having church gatherings, right? And we've- You are an attorney, so go ahead. <laughs> <laughs> um, so I, I mean, I have church events and we fill up the street, right? So I have got like 30, 40 people in my home temporarily, right? I'm coming over. Hey, come on over. <laughs> um, and then they all leave mm -hmm. in, in the evening. And so I, w I wanna be mindful unaddressed and, and confirm what Han Ann has stated is that I think that part of the problem may be when people come over and we all have people come over. We've had pool parties that probably my poor neighbors had to endure a bunch of 12 year olds making a bunch of noise. So um, I'm not as opposed because I believe your home, is it a five bedroom? It is. It is a five bedroom. Five bedroom, four bath. Um, so you're saying spending the night, that it's okay to have 11 to spend the night? I think if you had, if you just, even if we use the, the equation, uh, you know, two per, I mean, if you, even, if you brought it down to 10, um, I think that increasing the price combined with a, a reduction in number will curtail it. Um, I'm just wondering if it will curtail it too much, right? Because so, we also want to be mindful to, to the business owner who has the operation that it may limit them. And, and so I'm just trying to be the good neighbor, trying to you also You are being good, and I see your point in going to 10 is not a big issue for me to do that number since you have five bedrooms. But again, with the, uh, showing compassion, for the neighbors, eight is a good number, but 10 will also work, but not 11 or 12. I, th I mean, I think that if you put a maximum number of vehicles, then the, some of those extra people will be children, right? You're, you're not, if, if you've got, you're not gonna get 10 driving adults oh, coming and staying over with four vehicles, yes. right? So I think that if you, if you do four vehicles, couples, I mean, they, they'll have a couple of kids. I'm good with going down to eight um, because we're asking the Franklins to replace the fence up to a, uh, a level that is so acceptable. So you just lost me because I thought you were talking 10 and you are now uh, going down to eight? What no, I'm good with eight? 10. I'm good. Said, said For me personally, I'm good with 10. I'm also good with having the homeowners incur the cost of replacing the fence so that their neighbors um, have that privacy that they seek to have during this next one year. Okay, thank you for explaining that. 
a point of clarification needed for me. Um, in regards to having additional people on the property during the day, where did you guys, I, I couldn't quite understand where you guys. I'm landed. not sure we knew. Yeah. I'm just kidding. Um, I mean, so the maximum amount of guests could be 10. If you guys have 15 people in there and they're all quiet, no one's going to know. That's, that's what I'm saying, right? You have a pool party, they're going to call. It's pretty, pretty easy for me to okay. kind of figure that out. Um, so that's where I'm kind of, where I'm at. Um, I still don't know if I should have input if I'm not sure if I'm no, going to no, no, abstain or not. As long but as what I was saying, that the overnight huh? guests do not exceed that number of 10 at this point. That's why right. I said I can go with 10 at that point. Right. And that's, we're talking the same language? Yes. English? Yes. Okay, thanks. Espanol? <laughs> mm -hmm. um, so I guess the, the only other thing, a suggestion is that noise monitor that automatically notifies you when it does get. And whether it's eight o'clock, 10 o'clock, or two o'clock in the morning. You know, if it goes off at two o'clock in the morning, someone's playing basketball, you're not gonna be waking up to Villanueva's. Or if it does go off, you're notified that your neighbors are not having an issue. So I, I would definitely encourage you to do that. I don't know if that's a qualifi uh, pre -qual qualification that we can do in order to renew. And I probably so. Think so. That's a suggestion. Oh. They can't manage what we put on them. Or they're going to get called. It's one year. Is anybody ready to make a motion? <laughs> Isn't that one year going to get us to the? Okay. Can I ask one last question? Do I understand? Can the time that he asked to replace that? You come up to the mic. Yeah. <clears throat> so. I'll just tell you on the fence, we're, we're not making them put a new fence up. That is something between. It's a recommendation. I, I would not be recommending it. It's a recommendation, but we're not going to put it in the application they asked to put a fence. That's beyond. Our so purpose. we can't enforce that. Is that yep. And I know that, but. That's so right now saying. there's a there's an eight foot stock iron or stock the, the stock eight fence. Villanueva's have a six foot, which yeah. there would be some benefit of raising yeah. it to eight foot. It's going to require an HOA approval. Yeah. Well, it's, we, we can't just put it up um, without the approval. Additionally, that's per covenant. Uh, the Scots already have an eight-foot fence. I cannot see into their yard. Um, he's talking about gaps that are potentially in between. And my wife's looking at me, so I'm going to be quiet. Because <laughs> <laughs> the maximum height in R1 is eight feet. so. I'm trying to find a balance that I'm allowing more guests so that your pool of candidates does not diminish so that you're hurt, um, you know, from, from where you've been last year. So by having 10 guests, your, your pool of, of people potentially staying will remain there to keep that, your home occupied for the next year. At the same time, for me personally, I, I do, unlike Mr. Noble, I, I do think that it should be a requirement for the fix for the fence to be addressed, and and I do believe that that with the circumstances and the layout of the home, I think that it, that would be something that the board, the HOA board, should be able to approve for that purpose. When you've got um, adjoining neighbors asking for the same thing, I think you're probably right. The governor or the covenants state six, but the reason we've had one with the Scots that's eight is they have always had a pool mm -hmm. and so since we have now built a pool since we moved in it's likely that the board will approve that yeah so i for me personally i would like a fence the fence to be addressed um and and for me prior to when it starts getting busy right so i could see pools opening up by the middle of may so potentially seeing what options there may be to have that addressed by Legally? by may 15th Now I think we're ready for a motion. Yeah. I just, well, from Oklahoma City Legal, we can force them to address their fence. What you have uh, are standards for special exception approval, and that's in your staff report. So those are the criteria that you have to choose from, and those are the things that you get to decide whether or not have been met and what adjustments need to be made 
to assure that those things are met. That's a very attorney answer. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, <laughs> so um, you might look in particular at items one and three under yes. the standards for special exception. That's exactly what I was going to say. I'm confused on the fence. Are you guys still working through that up there? Okay. I think we're trying to figure out can we mandate or require make that a condition to passing? I think uh, are you wanting to put a fence up? You know, I share a backyard with five different neighbors. It's a hodgepodge of collections of fence line. I, and it's time for me to replace my fence. Um, I would like a standardization in the backyard. There's other neighbors that have fence line on, in my backyard that are not present today. I don't know that I can collectively get everybody to agree on, you know, is it a fence line of my choosing? Is it a fence line of their choosing? I mean, a lot of people have different concepts, and so that's a long answer to your question. I need a new fence. Um, it's going to take a lot of discussions to, to get everybody to agree on what we put up. Um, but you're not, opposed, you're not opposed to putting up a new fence. Property. I'm not opposed to putting up a new fence. I think you're just concerned with the timeline. I might be concerned with the timeline and who gets to choose what fence goes up. Mr. Franklin, if, that's your property. You can choose your okay. fence. If, if it's my wallet and no, I get to If it's within the, yeah, the eight foot or whatever it is that we're saying it's going to be, you can make it out of whatever as long as it stands. So the, the fence line and the fence, they're, they're all shared property, basically, because it's on the property line. Yeah, so, I don't think it so is our fence. Not any one person gets to choose. Oh, really? In a situation it's, like this where... It, it's it, just... And, Neighborly, right? And, and it's it's more of a concern about the number of people in the backyard and the parties. Agreed. To me, so. Well, I agree to the ten. That we've negotiated that effectively. We've reduced from eleven to ten. Is that what everybody? I think we're in agreement for that. I think yes. as far as the fence, the fence being on the property line is a shared expense between adjoining neighbors, right? Okay. So, knowing that. Uh, because it's because you've got the business side that you would like to continue operations, you've got your neighbors that would like some privacy. That's what I'm saying. Instead of 50-50, have you guys replaced the fence at least with the neighbors that are here um, that have stated it, have it is a, an issue? That have a six-foot fence. Have a fence that provides them the privacy that that they would like. Now, whether that's eight feet or ten feet, it sounds like eight feet sufficient for the Scots but that the gap between the panels may be an issue. Am I understanding that correctly or not? Okay, so something that does not have, that you can't see through. Basically the bottom is eight and a half feet. I mean, it's, it's, it's thin if we wanted to try. It. It yes. Like I mentioned earlier about the fence, and I'll leave it at that. I try, I, I fixed it myself. I repaired, I think it's 110 foot, the line. All he did was comment on how he would have done it. He never offered to pay a penny for it. He also asked, why, why, aren't, why are you not replacing the four by fours with galvanized posts? It would look nicer. But never did he offer once to pay for any part of that fence or do the physical labor. Can I ask you, is, would an eight, foot fet, an eight foot fence provide you that privacy that you're seeking? It would help, but because he raised his property so high to build that pool, <clears throat> You still see people walking, and they can see us in the backyard. So we've added a fireplace, outdoor fireplace with a pergola, and that's kind of obscured some of the, the issue. But at the end of the day, I don't believe he's going to do it when we leave here. And he'll be back in 12 months, like he said, and that fence will still be there. That's just my opinion. I'm not sure. I'm, I, I don't know the fencing standards. So what's the, is it 8 feet, 10 feet, or is it 8, 9, 10? You wanted to go above that. Well, the reason that I was asking if you were willing to do it is because I'm I'm struggling with the idea of of forcing you to put a fence in, and, and not because I don't think it's appropriate. I, after everything that I've heard, I absolutely think it's appropriate. I, I, at least 
in respect to the villain web is it looks like the two foot would help even if it may not solve it it would help uh but i don't want to establish i hate to say a precedence this is not a court but i don't want to establish a precedence like i want to be consistent and i would just hate to go down a slippery slope where we start requiring um private owners and operators of airbnbs to make improvements in order to run the airbnb so if you are comfortable, and it sounds like you said you need a new fence, if you're comfortable with it and, and it's something that you're voluntarily willing to do, then, then I, I can get on board with saying this is a requirement for you. Uh, if not, I, I'm, I'm still kind of torn on, on how to address this. I'd prefer not to commit to it if that's an option for me. It's, it's going to be a huge expense. But that, that's just my preference. You were asking, and I'm just telling you that's my preference. I'm in a tight spot. I'm just going to confess. I'm in a very tight spot because um, <laughs> it's it's a business that you're discussing versus um, a home. But we can decide how we'll vote on this once there is a motion made. If it's the delineating factor, I, I can't quite tell if it is. For me, it's a neighborly thing. Okay. It really is. I mean, okay. you're gonna you're gonna communicate with five different neighbors. Yep. Your fence needs to be replaced. You're gonna do it. If, it especially, you're saying you're gonna live there in a year, thirteen months, anyways. So, I think that's on you. Yeah. You're, you're planning on moving back there in a year? Um, yes. May my son graduates. We will be in by June. Okay, who wants to make a motion? Well, I, I don't know if I need to announce that I, I'm going to abstain from You don't from have to abstain just because you live there. Um, just because I'm conflicted <laughs> in both ways. Having lived there, do I need to? I guess. Decide whether or not you can fairly and objectively make a decision on the application. If you believe that you can, and if no one disputes your personal finding that you can <laughs> fairly and objectively make a decision, then you're not required to abstain. Um, as you all decide, look at your staff report that requires um, you to look at the standards for special exception approval and determine whether or not those have been met. So under item number three, that's the one that's questionable to me. For those who are wondering what number three is, it says the proposed use shall not adversely affect the use of neighboring properties in accordance with the applicable zoning district regulations. I'm not sure I heard that Kurt, or understand exactly what you said. Do you, do you have a copy of the staff report? If you have a copy of the staff report, look at page two, look at item three. This is right here, the proposed item three, item three or two? Three. Okay. The proposed use shall not adversely affect the use of neighboring properties in accordance with the applicable zoning district regulations. They're just talking through it on their behalf. Oh, okay. Ready? Yeah. I'll make a motion to approve case number 15564 as it meets the statutory requirement for a special exception with the self imposed rules in the application and the addition of a maximum number of guests at 10. Um, quiet hours from 10 p.m. to 8 a.m., a maximum number of cars at 4, no on street parking, and special exception for one year. 
Did you mention anything about the vaccine? No. So would you please look at um, item number seven before we even vote on it again, please? Um, the standards. I'll read it for those that don't know. It says number seven, if necessary to protect the general public and to protect the use of neighboring property from the potential loss of use or decrease in land value, the Board of Adjustment may require additional site-proof screening and landscaping according to the standards contained in section 59-11100 of this chapter. So would that cover the fencing at all? Additional requirements on fencing. Right. Yes. right. So right now there's there is a six foot stockade fence, site proof screened stockade fence, and an eight foot, which is by zoning R one the standard. So and I, and I know you know that, so that's why I said, would right. you please so, take a look? So at I, that's why I said I just don't believe we have to. We would need to ask for additional. Again, they're going to live there. They they have neighbors. And so I think a it's a community thing more than something that we should do from the board. Okay, thank That's you, my, I appreciate my position. that. So I heard a motion, but I didn't hear a second. I'll second. Got a motion and a second to approve with conditions, and I heard one year. Okay. Are there any other conditions other than one year and 10 people? Four cars. Four cars, Four cars. Four cars. no, no on-street parking. Okay, motion and a second. I made the motion, my screen didn't come up. Okay, sure. All right. We do a voice vote since it hasn't come up. Mine came up. Fine. Mine, mine hasn't changed. Refresh. refresh. Okay. Thank you. Okay, you're approved. Thank you. And I think the vice chairman is in charge because I have to leave. Oh, are you leaving? Uh -huh. Okay. Which one are we on now? Mm -hmm. Oh, thank you. I didn't know what I was doing. <laughs> it's this one, wasn't it? Pardon? Oh, yeah. Do you, uh, do you want me to move? You're good. Oh, you want me to move? Oh, okay. Oh, uh, Cindy, would you please call the next case? Item number 15, case number 15567 is an application for special exception of Amy Lou to allow home sharing in the R1 single family residential district located at 7236 Skylark Lane. Uh, would you please state your name and address? Uh, yes, please. Uh, my name is Amy Liu um, with iPremier I Homes. I manage uh, um, this um, property of 7243 Skylark Lane. And we are asking for a new application. So this is a three bedroom, I mean, I'm sorry, four bedroom, two and a half bath. And we have 
um, or not last week, two weeks ago, we talked about uh, the occupancy was at 10. We dropped it down to eight uh, quiet hours or 10, 10 p.m. to 8 a.m. Um, we talked about the incident that the that most of the neighbors are really talking about on New Year's Eve where there was a shooting. And as Roberto has indicated, um, in all the years that he has reviewed the request, there's never been a shooting. And likewise, we have never experienced that as well too. And so in taking the um, swift action in regards to that, just like the Franklins have, have basically said, um, a house doesn't really have all these things. You can have these same, same type of issues with the short term just as well as the, a long term. The, the thing that we were able to do in a case like this is that we were able to take swift action and to be able to prevent something like this hopefully in the future. Um, the vetting process um, is going to, uh, we did find some holes with the way, uh, even though we put um, house rules in place and things like that, they were all broken and we can't control people. People are going to act the way they are. If they're going to be a nuisance, they're going to be a nuisance whether the house is a long term or a short term. And so most of the, the, the complaints, um, and I'm, not, I'm just now getting this email, and I did speak with this gentleman. This is a gentleman who, who came up to speak last time, and we did speak after the fact. And I, um, we were going to notify, and I have notified the, the surrounding neighbors by sending them an email, and for those who, I just did it recently. So by the time he sent this email, we were not able to actually, he, he didn't hear from me. So this is the reason for the long, the long email here. So his words were just like this, is that when you have a nuisance guest, if it's a long-term, you're gonna have a long-term problem because they're gonna be there long-term. With a short-term, it's not gonna be as much. His, his deal is, that what we talked about is, is just making the neighbors aware. A um, couple of neighbors, they all got our, our phone numbers already. So if there is a, an incident, they will be able to contact. Um, we did put in a noise um, system in since that time as well too. So those were the things. Um, so all the recommendations that were um, asked last time, we have taken those actions and um, that's pretty much it. Got letters here that what we're sending out to them. Okay, well, thanks. Is there people signed up to speak on this? We don't have any. No? Mm -mm. And no one, no one wants to speak on this case. You're not here for this case. Okay. Are, are, are you the property manager or the owner of the property? Property manager. And, and you're not the owner of the property? Uh, no. I'm speaking on behalf. So you have a property management company? Correct. I Premier Homes is managing the property. I Premier Homes is managing the property. In the, the protest email we received today, uh, the gentleman that was here previously is stating that uh, you didn't make any attempts to reach out to him or any of the other neighbors. Is that accurate? I'm, I, right after, after this, I, we spoke in, in length right after that. And then um, I said that we were going to be talking to the, the neighbors and, and things like that. Well, I was out last week and just recently got back. And so by the time our, our emails kind of crossed, by the time that I was making action of talking to the neighbors. So, so you weren't able to connect with them and, and discuss? I did, I did talk to him right after. No, the, I mean, he acknowledged that in his, his letter, but outside of that oh, interaction. And, well, and I texted him this, this, this right before this meeting. And so I knew that he, this was coming. So he said, hey, I didn't hear from you. So I sent this email and I said, well, apologies. I was out last week. Um, this is in the process right now. Sent him a bunch of text messages, so we have conversed via text. And then after this meeting, I will physically go and talk to him and send him 
send him what I physical uh, email of what I sent him. Well, I, I don't feel like that's fair to the neighbors because, uh, I mean, I was pretty direct in, in terms of how I felt like the ball was dropped initially and then uh, the plan, as I understood it, was to go forth and to meet and interact with those neighbors to try to get to get their support. And that has not happened. So if we were to approve this today and then have you go visit with them after the fact, I mean, I don't see what the point would be. You would already have the approval. And I feel like as far as meeting up, the onus was on you to meet up with the neighbors and discuss this with them. I, I am waiting for the emails to come back. and. I didn't get that email yet. So, so you have emailed them? I have emailed, I've emailed him as well as the other neighbors who have, who have uh, made the concern that I had the email address up. So I have done that. Yes, sir. Okay. And when did you? And I'm waiting that. When did you email? Today. Okay. Yeah. So I'll, I'll just interject a little bit. For me, I, I would like to continue this for two more weeks. Yeah. I, I'd like to see a response, Perfect. response back. Okay. Sounds good. So two weeks is good for you? Yes. Which is that specific date? May 8th. I believe it's May 16th. Is, it is that our next meeting? It needs to be continued to a date specific. Specific to the meeting. So our next meeting? Our next meeting is May 2nd. May 2nd? May Does 2nd. May 2nd work for you? Perfect. Can we get it on the docket? Is, is that your motion, May 2nd? Okay. I'll second. This line is going to. second. All right, thank you. Thank you. Um, Cindy, would you please call our next case? Item number 16, case number 15572 is an application of John Allen on behalf of Cloud Nine Real Estate to allow home sharing in the R1 residential district at 1216 Northwest 34. Hello, I'm John Allen. I reside at 16701 on Boulevard. I'm here to apply for a home sharing license at 1216 Northwest 31st Street for a use of an Airbnb. Anybody here to speak on this one? No one signed up. Okay, a couple of questions on the application. Um, it's a three bedroom home. Yes, sir. Two baths. Yes, sir. And you're requesting 10. Um, I'll just tell you with uh, a three bedroom, two bath home, I, I would like to see it at six. Six, even with a pull out couch. We do seven. Do seven. Seven. Seven sounds good. Uh, quiet hours from 9 p.m. to 8 a.m. 9 p.m. Okay. to 8 a.m. Yes, sir. A maximum of four cars on the drive. No on-street parking. Yes, sir. And for a term of one year. One year. Yes, sir. Anyone else? Can four cars fit in the driveway? Because according to this picture, it looks like. I think it does. So there is a, uh, we, I don't know what this is. There's so a older. parking garage in the back that can fit one car, and the driveway is long enough to fit about three to four cars in it. Oh, okay. So. Don, I'm going to make, let you make that motion because yeah, you said a lot. You want me to do it? <laughs> yeah. Uh, I'd like to make a motion to approve case number 155. Seven, two, as it meets the statutory requirement for a special exception with the application as written and additional of a maximum of six guests. 
quiet hours from uh, nine. Seven. seven. Oh, seven. Sorry. Okay. Seven guests. Max or quiet hours from nine p.m. to eight a.m. A maximum of four cars and no on-street parking for a term of one year. I'll second. Uh, Cindy, would you call the next case, please? Item number, seven. Item number 17, case number 15573 is an application for special exception of Hema Krishna on behalf of Emerald Investment Group, LLC, to allow home sharing at 2428 Northwest 49th Street. Hi, my name is Hema Krishna, and I'm here on behalf of um, em Emerald Investment Group. Um, to apply for a exception for a home sharing license at 2428 Northwest 49th Street. I um, also brought my property manager if you guys have questions. Any questions? Anyone here to speak? Yes, we do have someone that has signed up to speak. Um, uh, Mr. Key Mur Murphy? Ken, I'm so sorry. Please come up. State your name and your address. I'm Ken Murphy. I reside at 2425 Northwest 49th Street. So I'm actually representing a couple of other neighbors on our street. We've been discussing this property and um, I would just like to say that um, we have a quiet, safe neighborhood. We've heard stories of parties and other problems with these uh, Airbnbs. And it's just not a really good fit here, in our opinion. And maybe they should create special zoning districts for these types of, of uh, uses. Um, it's a very quiet, safe neighborhood, and we just don't want that uh, interrupted. So I, I'm in saying in opposition to it. I would like to hear, you know, how many people they're going to have per night. Um, what do they plan to charge for renting the place? And some of the other things that we've heard the other applicants say about their Air Airbnbs, like number of cars, no street parking, quiet hours, et cetera. So as far as what they're going to charge, uh, we don't monitor that. And I'm sure once it's posted, you can go online and see what that okay. is, but that's not what we do. Okay. Yeah. As far as the rules go, I mean, we do have very strict rules, and I think we only requested six for the max occupancy, and there's three bedrooms. How many people? Six, six. max. And four cars in the driveway, and there's plenty of room. You guys for try to address us as the board. Oh, sorry. Yes. <laughs> um, so six max house in the house and then four cars no on-street parking I think it's pretty reasonable okay I, and I just noticed the young lady get up and give a card is she your manager? she's my manager yeah <laughs> thank you because we love it when they have property managers Can you approach the uh, microphone and just for the record? So, uh, I've been running them for two years, very successful, no issues. Um, I have them across the state as well, but particularly in Norman where they're very strict. I just wanted the gentleman to have my phone number since I will be dealing directly with the guests, the housekeepers, all of that, so that if there ever is an issue, he can reach out to me. He has my website as well as my other properties. But you can always see the price just by going on Airbnb yourself to see the price. And, and for the record, may we please have your name and address? Yes, my name is Libby Ross, and I'm with Co-Host Oklahoma. Thank you. And I, I just going to say that it still doesn't fit within our, our neighborhood. It's just not a good fit for us. We just don't want any issues. So I just came down here to speak in opposition. Thank you. Not that it matters, but this is Ward 3, right? This address?
Are you guys ready to make a decision? You guys. What I'm saying is that you should reach out to your council person to discuss the ordinance for home sharing. And other than that, I appreciate that you guys have a, a property management company on this. You follow the, you know, the guidelines what I would recommend anyways. So. Looks like a beautiful property. I would like to entertain a motion down there. Are there car limitations already on, on yep. the application? Or did you? Four cars. Four cars on there? I'm trying to figure out where it's at. At it. Okay. All right, motion to approve. Case number 15573 for the purposes that it meets the statutory requirements for special exceptions should be for a term of one year. Um, maximum number of cars will be four, no on street parking, and if quiet hours are not, are quiet hours mentioned? Quiet hours from 9 p.m. to 8 a.m. Second. And I'll just say this was a very well put together application. Yeah. And they had a manager. Yes, and there's property <laughs> managers. Yes. Did it approve? Second. Oh. It was approved. Yes. You're good. Yes. Oh, we good? Uh -huh. yes. Thank you. Yeah, it didn't come on. That's yeah, I know it didn't populate up here either. Yeah, I'm sorry. <laughs> yes, one, two, four. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> Item number 18, case number 15574 is an application for special exception of Sean Miller on behalf of Property Investments LLC to allow home sharing. Oh. 1515 Northland Avenue. I'm William Perez with Milk and Honey Realty, 3705 West Memorial, Suite 1302. You can start talking. Tell me. Oh, I was waiting for you to ask. <laughs> um, we're just trying to do a home share. It's a two bedroom house, so we do four guests, two cars max, no more than 14 days, quiet hours, 9 to 9, 9 p.m. to 9 a.m. But no parties, no groups. It's just a, t it's a tiny house. It's like less than 800 square feet. No one was here to speak on it. Oh. Hope not. <laughs> I would be quick though, not another hour. <laughs> I mean, other than it's gonna, since it's an initial, it'll be a one year. I don't, I don't have any problems yeah, with it. Yeah, one year, yeah. So. Um, I guess I'll make a motion uh, to approve case number 15574 for the purposes that it meets the statutory requirements for a special exception, uh, with the only change um, to the application being that it shall be for a term of one year. Second. All right, thank you. Thank you. Okay, I was like, you too, thank you. Is there anything else on the agenda that we need to discuss? Anybody out there? <laughs> oh, I so move that the meeting is over. What else? We adjourn.